Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and uh, we're going to, over the course of the next five or six videos, introduce you to some concepts related to many-to-many -many relationships and how to create persistent many-to-many -many relationships using Entity Framework Core. Uh, this first video, though, is just to show you a little bit of code that we've kind of put in place. There's nothing complicated here, so we're not going to walk through it in detail. Uh, it's all sort of stuff that you're capable of doing on your own, given the past few lessons. But we just kind of want to give you a high-level overview of the things we've added between last time and this time. Uh, the first thing we've added is we've added a new persistent tag class. So um, in the navigation up here, we have all tags and add tags. This is very similar to what we first did when we just added events and then finally categories, uh, which is to add a single class that has no relationships and is persistent in the database. So you can view tags. You can add a new tag if you like. Uh, Etc. So uh, pretty straightforward. That's all uh, stuff you've been able to do before. The next thing we've done is we've added a new view, and this is going to be uh, referred to as a, an event detail view. So right now we have um, a, a listing of all of our events here on the main events view, and we have columns that shows some of the basic high-level information here for uh, for these. Uh, uh, each of these uh, objects. Um, however, as we continue to add data to our objects, uh, not all of the data related to a given object will kind of fit nicely on this view. So we've added an event detail view so that if you click through, you can see all of the uh, details, including some details that might not be listed. Now, right now, there's no difference in terms of the information in these three columns and what's over here. But uh, as we go on, we'll sort of add information that will only go in the detail view and will not go into the main listing. So let's look a little bit at the code here before we move on. So I'll stop my application. Okay, so here's the tag class. Again, this is pretty straightforward. Right now the tag only has um, two properties, an ID and a name. The name is required. And then the tag controller um, has sort of the similar functionality as, as what you might expect. We've got um, we've got uh, a DB context, you know, so our DB context now actually has a uh, tags property, as you can see there, so we can work with tags and uh, save them and retrieve them from the database. We have uh, an index. This is our main listing. It just passes a list of all the tags in the database into the view. And then we have two add actions. One uh, handles get requests. That uh, just renders um, renders uh, the, the form to add a new tag. Right now, that uh, just has the, the tag as sort of the view model class. Um, itself. There's no information that's different between what needs to be rendered in that form and what's on the tag class. So we don't need a custom view model. And then on the post handler, or the post action method, uh, we check for the model state to be valid. In other words, did the uh, user submit a valid name for the tag? We save that tag to the database, and then we show them the tag listing. So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, that's our tag code. Let's go look at the detail view code. So um, let's maybe start in the controller. So there's a new action method here in the controller. This is the events controller. And um, this is going to uh, handle requests uh, that look like slash events slash detail slash say five, where five would be the ID of an event. Now this might be something that's uh, somewhat new to you um, in terms of seeing URLs like this. This is what's called, the five right here is what's called a path parameter. And a path parameter um, functions similar to how we worked with query parameters in the past. In the past, you could have done something like this, and uh, this method would have been called with the ID parameter there and the action method uh, equal to 5. So the way uh, ASP.NET is set up by default, you can do the same thing with a path parameter here in this specific position. There's a little bit more info in the book about uh, the, the, the sort of default URL templates in ASP.NET and path parameters. Um, but that's going to be the route that lands us here at this detail action method. So we'll have an ID for the given event that we want to display. We can use that ID to go uh, fetch it out of the database. So here is a sort of new um, uh, uh, entity framework syntax we haven't quite seen before. So let's break it down a little bit. This fetches the single event from the database with the category intact. Recall that we have to eager load uh, child objects of our persistent classes. So this first line here just references context.events. That's the collection of all events in the database. The second line is something you've seen before that says include, uh, uh, and we use this this lambda expression to say that we want it to include the category child object. And then below we say single, um, 
and this will filter out uh, the, from the entire collection of events the uh, events the one event that matches this boolean lambda expression and this lambda expression just says that uh, the we want the only object in the collection of events whose ID matches the ID that was passed into our method. The reason why we can't use the dot find method, which is what we've previously used to retrieve a single object from the database, for example, right up here, is that dot find doesn't work with dot include. So you kind of have to use this method chaining and dot include first, and then dot single if you want to get uh, a single object that has child objects. And then we create the view model from that event, uh, and then we uh, pass that view model into the view. So let's look at the view model. This is the event detail view model. This contains all the information that we want to display on that event detail view. Uh, most of this is pretty straightforward. Name, description, contact, email, that's stuff off of the event that you would want to show, obviously. And then we have a category name property. That's just set to be the name of the category object. We don't actually need the full category object to pass into the view. We just need the name of it. So we're not going to uh, go the extra step of passing in that full object. We're just going to pass in just the string name. So that's our um, view model that will get passed into the view. Let's go ahead and look at the view. And the view is pretty straightforward. It's just a table with some of those uh, pieces of information displayed. All right, so that's the code we've added since uh, the last time uh, we were uh, coding together. Um, in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and do some live coding and add some additional code and start to set up our many-to-many -many relationships.